Welcome into our overtime segment here at SportsSource.tv. The set still purple uh, due to our salute to Prince during the show today. If you didn't catch the show and you're just watching overtime, you're wondering what's going on here. Then again, if you didn't catch the show and you're just watching overtime, what the hell are you doing? Watch the rest <laughs> of the show. All right. Uh, and they're on, on these little boxes all around us. There are like four up there and three over there that you can watch. I probably pointed the wrong thing, but that'd be cool when I watch it on my website later. All right, uh, stadium stuff. I want to talk about two topics that came up today. First, uh, Tennessee spending going to spend a lot of money. There was one report that they're going to spend, quote, hundreds of millions of dollars. That seems a little far-fetched to me. Wait, hundreds Steve. of millions. That's 200 million plus. Uh, wouldn't surprise me, though, if they spent 100 million because that's, you've seen other schools in the conference. I mean, Texas A&M dumped a huge cash, but they basically revitalized their entire stadium, not a half of it. What we talked about in the show, though, briefly, was the fact that you're probably going to decrease capacity a little bit. And I've had a couple of people tweet me that they're not happy about that. But you're going to decrease the capacity if you do this. And the seats are looking at suites, club level, patio stuff. It's not, more, it's not going to be seats for Joe Average yeah. fan. Both of you guys, I think, agreed that the little guy's being priced out of it. But if you're UT, isn't that, I mean, do you have to worry about that? Well, so or are you trying to yeah. make, you run a business? No, you, you run a business, and that's the flip side of it, that I think the little guy is getting priced. The little guy's getting priced out at the concession stand. I mean, if you go to the ball game, yeah, and you take theater. Anywhere yeah, you go, little you guy's take getting a, priced out. You take a couple of kids with you, and you're talking about inside the stadium, you're going to spend close to $100 if you get them any kind of snacks or anything at all. Right. But, it, but in the, the bottom line is it is a business. And if you've got to reach X, do you think you've got to stay competitive with Alabama and LSU and Georgia and Florida? Then if the little guy can't give you X, then you've got to make it better for the people who say, I can be there instead of a $1,000 donation, I can give you 5000 or 10000 And that's what it's going to take to get into these new seating areas. In, ex in exchange... You know, I don't know that those guys have the passion of the, the average Joe. I think the average Joe probably has more passion. But those folks may be more likely to go to a box, have their yeah. wine. They can, if Tennessee's playing, oh, they, they're losing again. Flip it over to the Alabama game. Yeah. I think if you give them the amenities and the, the show-off ability, that may make you more cash than mm -hmm. you're losing and the average fan just stops coming. Russell, your thoughts on this? It seems like they're redoing the south and east concourses to just kind of Throw everybody. <laughs> okay, yeah. where it's not completely just a money grab with right. the, the uh, high-priced luxury seating areas, but um, yeah, I mean that's how they're going to make their money is uh, figuring out a way to cater to some of those people. They're going to have to have the high donations and the expensive seats. Yeah. Now we, have, I just want to be clear, we haven't seen the the seat the capacity. We haven't seen the the prices or anything. But when you look at the list, and we showed them in segment two of today's show, if you want to go back and click that button, uh, which would be right there, I think. <laughs> um, if you want to click that and see that, you'll, you'll see the list. And by looking at the list, I think we can assume you would be losing capacity. And again, we're assuming. We know what that can do. Uh, right. But it, that could drop capacity, and it could raise prices. That's my guess. Well, but here's what's funny, too, about you mentioned about widening the concourses, which they, they need to be all over the stadium. Sure. I mean, at halftime, it's just, a, it's just a mess. It seems like the new ones on the west side are, are pretty good. A little better, I yeah. sent on the west side. Okay. <laughs> Never mind then. <laughs> and <laughs> anyway, here, here's the thing about they're going to make the concourses bigger on the south end. Okay, that's great. But if you're also going to put those patio seats on the south end, you're going to have to expand your stadium back because you're not going to yeah. be able to float them out there in an anti-gravity device. Right, well, that's where the patio so here's comes what in. we're going to do for Mr. Average. We'll give yeah. you a wider concourse. Of course, the whole reason it's wider is so you can support the rich guy. But, but I just yeah. I just don't think they do we're, anything. We need to get if that it thing. If it doesn't make them money, they're not out there being Mr. Nice Guys. But it is but a who business. Is? But exactly. Who is? It's a business. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to take up for them, but... It's a business. Where are they going to get that floating cloud like they're building for the stadiums in Qatar for the yes. World Cup? <laughs> yeah. Yes, to keep those cool. early September games yeah. are hot. The, uh, you know, I never, I don't complain about ticket prices. It's just I don't. And whether if, if I'm going to Boston or Indianapolis or Nashville or whatever, it is what it is. You either pay it or you don't. And there's TV to watch it if you don't want to pay it. The idea that well they have to, you have to price this for me. They got a business to run. You know, they can price themselves right out of business, mm -hmm. or they can make things budget work without me, fiscally work without me. So uh, 
I don't really complain about prices, and especially if they're if they think this is what they're going to have to do moving forward. And it does seem to be the trend nationally to reduce size and create nicer amenities for the big donors. I think they probably just keep it up with the Joneses. Uh, let's keep up with the Johnsons. <laughs> we talked about Alexis Johnson in today's show. Um, one charge dropped, another charge reduced, and if he keeps his nose clean for six months, it'll be dropped too. Um, the plaintiff, ironically, is, I mean, the, the girl who made the charges and agreed to have one dropped and one reduced and one that may drop off, she's still a plaintiff in the Title IX lawsuit. It'd be interesting to see if she stays in there. But uh, we talked about it. Should he be back on the football team before that six months is up? And there was a little debate, I think. Uh, my feeling is, if you're Tennessee, fair or not, I don't think you can let him back on until he's served his six months and had it expunged from the record or had it dropped. Um, if you do, you run one hell of a risk. If he mm -hmm. were to come back, and here's the thing, you got to keep a college kid away from girls in his room. Because mm -hmm. all it takes, I'm not saying all girls make stuff up, but all it would take would be one to make something up. Mm -hmm. What happens in your lawsuit? What happens on ESPN? Well, kid got a six-month kind of probationary thing. Tennessee brought him back anyway, and here we go. Here's another issue. Yeah. So I'm saying this. Even if I'm a college kid his age, and you're telling me now this is serious. You can't have a girl in your room. Just don't be alone with girls. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So I just think you're asking for trouble if you bring him back for six months. That may be fair. That may not be fair. I just think that's a reality. You said that you'd have questions about it, whether or not six months yeah. elapse or not because you don't like what you hear from what the charges are and uh, you also suggested that if he'd been a fourth string defensive back he'd already be gone yeah, I, mean, I don't, let's, don't deny that either let's be honest about it if uh, the the only reason we're having this conversation is because he was a four-star defensive tackle like the most important position in, yeah. in modern college football at a position of need where Tennessee's thin at because of injuries and and whatnot if if he were a you know, fifth-year offensive lineman or whatever. Oh, they would have kicked him off immediately. We're taking a firm stand. We do not tolerate this from anybody on our football team. Uh, the only reason we're having this conversation is because the kid's a great prospect. I don't know, again, I'm not going to say that's just UT either. That's the way it goes. Sure. But I think you're yeah. correct. Bob, your thoughts on this. You said during the show that you would bring him back now. You know, I, and, and you're correct and you're correct. You're, you're both right. At some point... The individual should, whatever price the individual is told to pay, he shouldn't have to pay more than that. And I'm not so sure that it's right, although it might be smart. Is it right to continue to punish him for the sins of others? Yeah, it's probably fairly smart, but it doesn't make it right. Um, at the same time, if his violence against this girl was so bad that it left marks, but supposedly she was also violent back to him, mm -hmm. I would, you know, we may never know exactly and probably will never sure. know exactly right. what happened. But in, in this case, I tend to lean a little bit towards the kids. I asked you earlier. Everybody said his record coming to the University of Tennessee was clean. Well, Seemed I don't like know that. I, don't th I think it's clean. I'm not. Don't factor and, that into your thinking okay because I haven't gone back and researched it to get in trouble as a 15 year old I don't know I've not seen any I think that would have come out haven't seen it haven't heard it nobody's told me that nobody's whispered my ear but let's not factor that in don't okay. know that he's a great I think it should factor in I mean if, if this but, is a one-time thing Butch I, would know I we don't so I don't want to yeah, factor that in sure. on a radio show because we're just I mean a TV show yeah. we're just making stuff up uh, I mean but, I don't think the the kid should have his entire life thrown away well, over, no. over but one then, incident but then the first no, I think Think Russell, you said it during the show, red charting. That yeah. might that in the end, if if you were going to talk Mike me back that? from yeah, Mike it was Mike. That. I don't know that he would want to. You don't sign as a JUCO to come red shirt somewhere, but you also. I think at the very trouble. least you have to wait out this six month period. Yes. See, and here's the thing, you're saying well, he's, he's already done what he's supposed to do. No, he hasn't. Yeah. No, he hasn't. He's still. If you're saying well, his debt's paid. No, for the next six months he'll be paying his debt. In six months, when that thing comes up, then he will have paid his debt. I'm not big on punishments. I'm all for second chances, third chances, 50 chances. I am. That's just me. Uh, raised by a minister, I'm a forgiving guy. And I know that Lord knows I've needed chances in my life. So I'm not trying to come down as the, you know, the, the hanging judge here. No, you, but, you and I are on opposite ends of this stuff a lot of times. But on this one, I think uh, 
I'm going to say that because the debt isn't paid and because of what's going on, you know, you've got to take this yeah. one seriously. Mm -hmm. And again, if this had been, I'll, I'll go so far, if, if he had had a DUI and it was six months to be cleared, I would think about bringing him back beforehand and saying, mind your P's and Q's, one's more dangerous to the public. Yeah. Or if but, they found him with pot. Or if they found him with pot, yeah. Yeah, absolutely be back because I've got black lights going on yeah. here at the show, so I'd be all for that. <laughs> but um, if, uh, if it were another thing, I would think about it. Think about it. But the fact that you are in this precarious situation with this Title IX suit, if you bring him back, and let's say he doesn't do anything, but he's accused of doing something, that will be the A1 story mm -hmm. on ESPN and every ticker in the country, every website in the country will be, Happened you with Alabama last year and Jonathan Taylor. They, yes. they brought him back they after, him back. and he had a second incident. They took a hit for it, but they won a national championship. So, so that kind of, kind of yeah. you know, Butch Jones isn't Nick Saban. He doesn't have that much Cache, capital. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the thing, I mean, the other thing is you lose your title line case immediately. I don't go to trial. We've made that abundantly clear. I would have settled this when they first called a year ago, so nobody ever knew about it. But since they didn't do that, and you're, you're saying you're going to go to trial in three years or two years, whenever it gets there, uh, I, if, if you bring this guy back and something happens, let's say it wouldn't, but the chance is there that it could happen. If it did, my goodness, that's, that's the opening statement, isn't it, from the plaintiff's attorneys? Well, we've told you they ignore it and they look the other way on these sexual assault cases. Here's a case where a kid had been accused of mm -hmm. uh, assault of a woman. They let him back when he was on probation. Boom, something else happens. Now again, I don't, I'm not trying to disperse the kid. We're, that could be player X that we're talking about. But you have to consider that because millions of dollars and a university's reputation right on it. You can't just say, well, we can't factor that in. We have to look only at Alexis Johnson. In a perfect world, you're right. <laughs> not a perfect world. And my world is perfect. That's right. You want to do the right thing for the kid and the victim here, but there's also the football angle of this. Alexis Johnson, like we said, a great prospect. He'd probably help your team in this big season. But to what you're saying, if you brought him back and he screwed up in that six-month period. Or somebody claimed he screwed up. Yeah, that could, that could derail and become a huge distraction, which could negatively impact this huge season, which you've got such big expectations. So, so many things to factor now in. Now you're putting it in football terms. Yes. And the fans are yeah. going to like you now. They yeah. agree with that one. All right. Guys, I appreciate it. Uh, Russell Smith, tell folks where they can hear you. Yeah, uh, weekdays from 3 to 6 in the afternoon on WKGN, Fox Sports, Knoxville, AM 1340. Good guy right here. Good guy. Glad Thank to have you, you on. <laughs> uh, this guy, he's been with the show for 13 years. Still can't call you a good guy. Bob yeah. Hodge. Bob Hodge, always fun to have you And they you can here. hear me ranting and raving at places <laughs> all over Knoxville. <laughs> all right. We will see you next Sunday at 11 a.m. WATE 6. We'll have our normal lighting scheme unless there's some other tragedy that forces us to honor someone with purple lights or red lights or whatever. See you next Sunday.